All right, guys. Uh, thanks for coming to the class. Sorry about the weather. Um, so this is advanced sorting board, um, but I feel like unlike a lot of other sorting board classes, this is mainly going to be focused on your board and how to use your board like more offensively and use it use more utility other than just blocking stuff. All right. So that's a couple points I want to talk about um, before we really like kind of get down to the nitty gritty of stuff. <clears throat> so uh, the first thing is, uh, is a couple terms that I use in the class. Uh, one of them is rubbing is racing. So who's heard of rubbing is racing? All right, so we're all, anybody not know what that is? Okay, so rubbing is racing. So <clears throat> if you guys cross game, you guys all know like this is all good stuff to do. You can bash and all that stuff. In amp guard, you can't do that. But I can manipulate equipment as long as I don't push you around, bully you, right? So rubbing is racing is this is all good stuff to do, it's keeping in contact, kind of knowing where your opponent is without balling them over. Does that make sense? Okay. The other thing is um, clogging the lane. Okay, now clogging the lane um, is essentially, um, I'm going to show you uh, some examples of this, is you want to keep your opponent's sword locked up at all times using either your weapon or your shield so that they can't swing at you while you're trying to set this stuff up. Right? You want to make them feel uncomfortable, not confident in what, what they're trying to do to you. Okay? And the third thing is the tasty bits. All right, so the tasty bits, everybody tells you to bait, right? Everybody's like, oh, bait, bait this, bait this. It's like, how many times do you remember to bait stuff when you're actually fighting, right? One guy, right? Just one guy. Of course, you ought to look at that, one guy. All right, so instead, think to yourself, it's like, all right, well, maybe you're, maybe you're shorter, right? It's harder for you to get into that close range where you can really do this shield-to-shield -shield contact stuff. So you taking the first swing might not be the best option for you, right? So maybe you need to give them some tasty bits, you know. So maybe if you know you're shorter, you want to pump your pump your shield out real quick and make them be like, oh, there's I want that shoulder, right? So then you you pump it. Now you're close, right? Now you can now you can get in there, right? And you're shorter, so now that now you're harder to hit because you're down here. Make sense? Okay. So an example of clogging the lane. Okay, and this is one that I use a lot. Is uh, I just use. A plain, you know, flat cross, right? So all you guys have seen this before. You know, you can throw it from sort foot forward, shield foot forward. Normal flat cross, right? Now, you would think, well, if you throw a flat cross, you do that all the time. They'll just swing back at you, right? The difference is that I'm going to close this distance with my shot, right? So instead of just throwing here, I'm going to go like that. Okay? You see how now when I'm here, if he wants to cross me, that's a small movement. If he wants to wrap me, that's a small movement. If he wants to like shield wrap me, you know, if I'm shorter, that's even harder, right? So once you get this close, you have a lot of options, and that's the things we're going to go through today. Okay? Does everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So <clears throat> the first uh, first kind of maneuver I'm going to show you guys. Is a, who's heard of like the, the, the shield scoop or like the, the can opener? You guys know what that is? Okay. Yeah. So basically, like I know you guys have seen this, right? People will line up and somebody will go, right? What's wrong with that? Leave yourself way open as you reach out. Scooping. Yeah. Anybody else? All right, so I'm going to show you a way to do this without reaching out and getting hit in the back, right? So a lot of these are all going to begin with clogging this lane, right? Now, <clears throat> when I do this, notice how I'm putting my corner kind of on the edge of his board. So this is what I want. I want to pin this here, and then I want to get that board out of the way and try to get control of this hand, right? So once I have this hand from here, I can you know, keep this bound up, keep pushing on him, all right? Uh, you see where my shield foot is, okay? Now, the goal is to get him to push against you so that you can get your board behind his, all right? So, we clogged the lane, you know, made sure he can't hit us. So now, I'm going to take a little small step and keep my shield pushed on his to where he's going to want to resist me and push back, all right? All right, so, I'm going to drop this. You see how I pushed? And when he tried to free it, he like basically went to, went farther than he needed to. 
right? So now that I've done that, he's pushed back. Try to try to resist me and put, put your shield back where it is. Can't. Because he's now all he has is his outstretched arm fighting my hips. We're gonna change direction. Yeah, we're, we're gonna do it the other way. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm gonna stretch this one shield foot forward. So. So he can't push he can't push back against me. I'm not I just have my arm here. Make sense? But yeah. how do you end it because your hand is so far your your sore hand is so far out, how do you actually land the shot there? So I have my hand down so you can see it. So if I go here and I push, right, he's here, I can go there, I can keep him out here, I can I can back away and make space and throw. I mean, there's not much. There's not much that he can do once so he's. Your short side attacks from the other side. Oh yeah. So we're here. Okay, so you can go here. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. like, if, if I'm here, even even if he's like, oh, I got my sword here, you know, if he tries to wrap, you have a two shot at that point too. You know, because of the way your body is, like, it's obvious where he's gonna want to throw. You he's know, if I have to your back. like this. If he's gonna high cross me into my sword, he deserves to die. <laughs> <laughs> like you know what I mean? So um, that's just a safer way to get that board out of place. And if you notice at the end, once I turn my hips, like that's the way I would be standing normally if I were fighting anyone. Does this right? work so, as well with like rounder shields? Yeah, I mean I uh, I did this with a with a 30 inch round, like when I first started doing this. I mean, Kai can uh, Kai can show you. Do it against a round shield first. Against a round shield? Do you want? Are you, are you asking? Either way, or, yeah. Yeah, I mean it works on a round shield too. It's just that instead of putting it on the top, I put it on the out, outside edge. Okay. It's all really just where you want to apply the pressure. So like, I want to put as much pressure on the edge, you know, of his shield as I can. So on that corner, that corner is the closest thing. It makes sense for me to put my corner there because it's also in the way of his hand. You know, but on this, I would probably go more to the outside edge of the, of the board instead of up here. And then vice versa with him coming towards you. Yeah, I mean, and same thing here. Like if you did it to me. Oh. Yeah, it does the same thing. Whereas I have this corner, I mean, with a round, you get to be more a little, more, little more aware of your shoulder. But I mean, if you have your shield in the correct position, you're not gonna get hit. Do you notice what he's doing? He's angling his shield back yeah. over top of his shoulder. Not, he's not doing it like like this. Yeah. Yeah, I like to put my shit on my face, and then that lets me know that it's over my shoulder. Make sense? Anybody got any questions? No, that's solid. All right. So go ahead and pair up, and we're gonna we're gonna do this for a little oh. bit. Let everybody. Oh, yeah. I... Yeah. Alright, so, uh, so this one's uh, this one's pretty simple. Alright, so this is a, uh, you can do this as like a shield pop or a pin. I used to do it as a pop, I do it more like a pin now. Um, so, essentially, all you're doing is you're clogging the lane, and then I literally just hold this here. That's it. Right. You can also blade beat it. Yeah, no, it's so, so complicated, right? Uh, you can also do a blade beat to a pop, so you can get that. Right. So that's another one you can do. Um, typically after I throw this, it's really quick. So I'll come in, and I'm out. Alright. Anybody have any questions about that? No. From the other that's side. Real simple. Alright, right. so I'm going to do the pop. So. Alright. And then the pin. Makes sense. Look good? Alright, let's, let's try that. Need it. Okay, so uh, basically, this this is so uh, if 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 a, if a fight's not going your way, this is an easy way to kind of get to get out of it if you can just kind of catch the timing of how the fight's going. All right, so um, basically, you, uh, to do this to do this sort of practices, you start it nose to nose. All right, so Kai and I are fighting. You know, he's gonna throw a couple shots. See, I want to catch that hand, right? So as I see his hand or I see his sword come out, I just want to, I just want to push it away, get it away from me. Right? If you got to punch the their uh, 
handle or their, their, their blade. Just, all you gotta do is push it back for just a second for you to step back and get away from them. Any questions? All right, so these next two things are, are kind of like mostly cross game stuff. So uh, one of them is shield edging, which if you don't want to practice that, I understand. And, um, and the duck walk. Right, so there's a couple different versions of the duck walk. Uh, I'm going to show you the cross game version, and Kai's going to show you the amp guard version because I suck at it. Um, so shield edging is pretty simple. So a shield edge, everybody knows what a shield edge is. Just, you know, this. All right. So the ways that I like to use shield edging, um, so I use it as a disruption, right? So if somebody's going to uh, throw a shot, I'll just hit them in the middle of it. All right. Um, another thing is uh, we'll go to the high cross. The high cross was talked about a lot earlier. Um, so people will throw the dumb high cross, all right? So like that, all right? So I'd freeze frame real quick after you throw that. You see where he is? Yeah. You'll see where, all right, so I'm gonna take a six inch step here. <laughs> and you edge him. His friends aren't gonna mess with you either. <laughs> all right, so, so you can use those different ways. Um, uh, Two-handed two swords and poles intercept the swing. You know, you got a guy with a pole, he's coming down, get in his face and punch that pole. I mean, the pole's not hitting you. If he hits you with incidental, it doesn't count. Understand? Anybody yep. Any questions? All right. So the duck walk. All right. Um, <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> we could demonstrate it like up under the dryness. So. Nope. All right. So you've legged your opponent. Okay. Leg people suck. We all hate leg people. All right. So. Uh, like most other things today, uh, clogging the lane is going to be a piece of this. Um, so I want to make sure that I'm at a distance where I can throw at him with a step, but I don't want him to be able to just like lunge and do some crazy stuff and hit me with like some randomness. Like, right? So, uh, especially people who like to do like the, they'll lunge. So I'll stand about here so then those people can't hit me. Right, I'm gonna go in when I want to go in. All right. So when I decide the time is right, so I'm gonna step off to his board side, right. And the reason for this is, I know that it's gonna be harder for him to hit me up top. So I want to step towards his board and cover my shoulders, so that way uh, I can block my legs with my feet, and he has to swing not only through my board but also his to hit me. Okay. So me even just stepping this way. All right. See how far away his like sword is, and if he tries to hit my feet, I'm just gonna drop my level. All right. So, but first we're gonna clog the lane, and then we're gonna step, and he's really gonna be screwed. All right. So we're throwing. See how I got him locked up. So now I'm gonna take this step here, and then over he goes. And as soon as he goes over, you follow him up, and you hit them feet. Windshield wipers. All right. Everybody understand that? Yes, it's not. He pressed it. Any questions? This is the cross thing. All right. So here's the amp guard one. I'm gonna show you the amp guard one. So an amp guard, you can't physically bully your, your opponent. You can still manipulate his gear, but you can't push him around. You can't push him over. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't do this tactic. You just can't pelvic thrust them at the end. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna do the exact same thing. You're going to come in, you're going to clog the lane, step to his shield side here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to step back towards uh, his weapon side with your shield as you press. And you're going to just kind of inch forward and make him uncomfortable, right? I'm not pushing him over. I'm manipulating his gear here. And then I can, from here, I can throw a rat. Or he might just fall over because he's uncomfortable. I can hit him in the arm. I can step out and hit him in his back leg. Also, because of how close he is, I can't really hit him. Like, I can't hit him. I don't have to worry about this quadrant of my body because it's almost impossible for him to hit me in that quadrant. Right? Great, his shield is blocking it. Somebody lost a pommel. Oh, no. Jerry lost a pommel. I win. 
So the idea there is don't push your opponent over, but you can get close enough to make him uncomfortable. Okay. <laughs> I like that. Uh, anybody got any questions about that? All right, guys. Oh, wait, I do. Uh, what's up? So there are going to be instances because I'm relatively short under the amp guard, where even if they're on their knees and I'm there, like they're still going to be here on me. Like, is that, like, I, I'm, like, I just, I'm, I'm concerned that for shorter people, if, will it be relatively the same thing? Like, just, it, it, it would be, the, it would be the same thing. So, so for me to do that, I have to crouch a lot. Yeah. For you, you're just crouching without crouching, I guess. You know what I mean? You're I just mean, walking up on them. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, if, any, if anything, it makes it easier for you, because, I mean, th think about it this way. So, like, all this stuff that you're doing today, you're fighting taller people. Well, now, if they're the same height as you, you sh like, it should be easier. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, uh, um, you just have to kind of compensate for, like, how, <laughs> sorry, how, uh, how tall the, pe the pe person is. Remember when you're fighting people that are, like, down on their knees? You control everything about the fight. You control when the fight happens. You control the distance at which the fight happens. You control when, when you swing versus when they swing. Yeah. It's all about your comfort at that point. It's however you, however you feel, you know? <clears throat> get closer to them, they're going to sit down. They're not going to stand up on the knees. Any questions? Everybody good? They're going to sit yeah. back and down. Because they want to wait from your sword. All right. Get shorter Thanks, guys. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.